Hello everyone, this is Money Mom and welcome to the channel. Today, I'm here with my wonderful dear friend and co-host Jan from New York City Saves Money. Jan. Hey Dawn, hey everybody, good to see Hi, you. Jan. How are you doing Jan? I'm doing very well, how about you? I'm too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed. So today, <laughs> we're going to talk about something that's near, a subject near and dear to many people's hearts, extreme ways to save money. I actually have three questions. I'm going to be asking not only wonderful Jan, myself, and I'm also going to ask subscribers and viewers to answer in the comments below these three following questions about how extreme you would go to save money. Like always, let's get started. Jan, do you have anything you want to say before we start with question number one? Well, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for being here. You guys are amazing. May not like always the answers I give, but thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you. Hey, you know what? We all have different opinions and life experiences. It's all about personal finance, and that's okay. You guys don't have to listen to everything we say, right? No. Uh, but And that's totally fine. Okay, the first question I have is this, and I want the subscribers and viewers to answer this question below because I'll be reading the comments as they come through because I have this video set as premiere. Okay, the first question is, are, and I will be answering it too, Jan and viewers and subscribers, are there extreme things that you will not do to save money? Are there things that, you know, a lot of people will do it and there's nothing wrong with doing it, but it's just not for you. Go ahead. Okay. An extreme thing for me to never, ever want to do. And I'm so, I'm so amazed at the people that can do it or willing to do it, but I won't do it. <laughs> I just, I just, can't do it. I just can't do it. Okay. I'm dying um, to know. Number one, I will never beat my clothes against the rock. So instead of that, I ra I rather send it off to an actual laundry. Now, I know people might have heard this before, but not everyone. Send my clothes off to the laundry, have them fold it, have them return it to me. It sort of like feels like a little bit of a luxury to me. But why? Because the time that I would spend, because I would have to go to a public laundry in my case, the time that I would spend going to the public laundry, sitting in there a couple of hours, for example, I could be getting other stuff done to increase my income so that I can continue to get that quote, end of quote, luxury. And to me, I just rather sometimes just increase income even by a little bit for those little niceties, because it's a different world, like in a crowded city, sitting in a public laundry and just like waiting when, you know, you could be doing so many other things. That's how I feel about it. Hey, and That's you know, one of the main, things. Well, the main thing is, is you get value and you're happy with it. That's all yes. that matters. So yes. that, is there anything else you can think of that you're not willing to do to save money? And I mean, I'm talking some extreme things, you know, cause there's some people that are extremely frugal. Nothing yeah, I, that. it's good. They, they it's good that they have those resources and they know that they can be frugal if they need to be. So that's a positive thing. I am not willing to completely give up ever, ever in my lifetime. If I want to order in or go to a restaurant, I still like to keep the idea of having a treat. I'm not going to give up the idea of having my mad, crazy money, which the folks on my channel are pretty familiar with. That's allowing myself X number of dollars a month to do whatever I want with. I'm not willing to give that up because if life is just going to be about constant, continuous drudge, uh, sacrificing, never looking forward to something, you know, a little expensive once in a great while, I'm not willing to give that up. I like having some nice things in life. It's okay. And I would rather work a little longer to get that stuff than just always trying to squeeze things out of, you know, out of the woodwork. That's the way I think that's my philosophy. I'd rather increase my income a little bit than live the struggle life. I don't want to live the struggle life. 
I agree with you 1000% Jan, because you know what, let's say I didn't have money for something I really wanted. We'll say a new outfit that I really wanted some new winter clothes, but I was a little tight on my budget. I would just do some extra product demos and just maybe pick up some Wednesday demos or do some extra things or ask, Hey, is there anything else I can do or find a special scheduling project to do? I would find ways to bring in money or maybe cut back on something, but I would, you know what? I, I know what you mean. I don't want to be living so tight that it feels, and my husband even said this, it's not really good for your morale in my opinion. Now this is my opinion. You all may disagree. And if you disagree, that's fine. So is there anything else you actually put down? I actually have two answers you didn't say yet, but I, I just, I just I wanted to add that it doesn't take all that much. Even if a person increases their income in tiny increments by 100 to $200 monthly, you would be amazed at what an incredible difference that can make. That might get you that extra gas in your car. That might get you that one night out or a trip to the dollar store and just have that little bit of $20 mad crazy money to get whatever you want. But you know what I notice? At the end of the month, I usually have a little extra money and I'll say, oh, I'm going to go spend it on something. And then I never find anything I really want that much. <laughs> so then it ends up going kind of in my extra stash of cash. I've done that. <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, what? I'm not spending $4.99 for a box of cookies or seasonal pumpkin spice cookies. You know, because so now the days I'm not willing to spend over on overpriced things. I, I just, I'm kind of particular about what I've spent my money on, but yeah, I agree with you, Jan. We want to live a balanced life. So I put down two things I'm not willing to do. One of them I've done and it just didn't end up working out good. May I share? Sure. Okay. And while I'm doing this, I'm hoping I'm seeing comments um, because I know many of you have answers about what you're not willing to do. And you know, I want to hear from you guys. Okay. I wrote just two things down one thing, and there's nothing wrong with either of these. One of them I've done before, but it just was kind of gross and it didn't end up working out and I didn't find anything anyway. Uh, dumpster dive. Number one, when I tried it, there were some police officers that came around. <laughs> that didn't end up being good. Uh, number two, you actually have to open. It's not like all these goodies are laying on top of the dumpster, at least in my area. You have to actually open up these bags and dig through disgusting garbage to get to things. And let me just say some of the areas were odorific and I'm not willing to dumpster dive. Um, first of all, like I said, there was a police officer driving around and I don't want to get in trouble. I think some areas are easier to do than other areas. Some people have great success. It just wasn't a good fit for me. But if you do it, you get a lot of good things. Wonderful for you because at least that's not going in a landfill. Okay. This is the other thing. And Jan, you told me the same thing. I'm from Minnesota originally. I live in, I'm from the Twin Cities. I'm from St. Paul, Minneapolis. I live in the DFW, Dallas, Texas area. Um, you guys know in Minnesota, we have extreme cold here. We have extreme heat. I know of some people that live in really hot temperatures that either don't use air conditioning and they just use fans. And I don't know how they do it and then wear a wet rag around their neck. And that's okay if they want to do that. Um, or they keep their air conditioning. If it's 110 out, they keep it on like 82 or 85. Um, I am not willing to do that. I get, especially with this neck brace, I get overheated. I can go with the heat low and, and bundle up. I don't mind that, but I'm not willing to go without air conditioning and I'm not willing to dumpster dive at this moment. How do you feel about both of those, Jan? I feel 150,000% in agreement with you. And honestly, I don't see the purpose of setting an air conditioner to 82 degrees. I don't yeah. see the purpose. First of all, number one, I have flat rated service on purpose. I know every single month what my, my bill is going to be. That doesn't change. So in my particular case, I could set mine to 75 and not worry about it. That makes a lot of sense. Now I am willing to take shorter showers, things like yeah. that, make sure the lights are turned off and all of those things. I'm willing to do that, but I just, I get heat overheated easily. By the way, my family's about to come in. You might hear some noise. Okay, so I'm going to go on to number two. Jan, what are some extreme things that you would do to save money? What are some extreme things you would do to save money? 
Okay, this is this is sounding really crazy, but I would oh, consider yeah. I would consider like okay, I would like set a number to go to the grocery store, for example, just for the fun of it, not because I have no choice, but for the fun of it to see how well I would fare in 2022 with a thirty dollar budget, for example, for one week. So what I would consider doing, and I would have no problem with it, for example, I would let's say have breakfast for dinner seven nights that week whoa That's, i would drink water only and not from well <laughs> not from this <laughs> yeah I, hey jan I, i'm doing the viewers <laughs> uh, so i'm i mean you know well i got this on sale and it, i got a good price so i'm okay with that however for me thirty dollars is kind of on like the really like lower side at this time in New York city, 2022, not impossible, yeah. but I would, try, I would try it for fun, yeah. for the fun of it. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. No, I don't know. Cause I've actually, I've been to New York state, but I've never been to New York city before. And I don't know if New York's ready for me, but I don't know. No, they're I not, but I love you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I don't know if most places are ready for me. That's okay. But, Dallas Fort Worth is not ready for me either. So, oh my so. goodness. But I don't know what the cost difference is. Now I know we live in all different areas. I'm not sure what it costs to buy, say, a box of Frosted Flake cereal in New York retail versus Dallas. I know that it's probably more expensive, but I don't know like what a dozen egg costs there. It all oh, I've been known to pay normally, normally like three ninety nine and over for eggs. That's just that's yeah. normally I think right now here, if I'm not mistaken, it there well, for a little bit it was like three twenty nine. I think right. last time it was two ninety nine for a dozen eggs. But you mentioned something very important. What because when people no no you mentioned something important about the differentiation. For example, even within the borough of Manhattan, for example, buying things on the Upper East Side versus buying things maybe um on the Upper West Side, they're both high end, Upper West okay. and Upper East. But if you go to continue way, way further, further up towards the Bronx, some of the prices seem to come down. So it all depends. It, it's like within, yeah, even from borough to borough. Uh, okay. Queens has better prices in their grocery stores than Manhattan. Wow. Okay. I did not know. That's interesting. Okay. Yes, so and Brooklyn from a friend telling me in the background. Oh, Brooklyn even. Uh, <laughs> okay, what about, um, is there anything else you can think of you'd be willing to do? To And it might be extreme for you. And remember, guys, what's extreme to you or me may not mm -hmm. be extreme to somebody else. Let okay, me see. So Honestly, I have to look at my cheat notes on this okay, one. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote some notes down too. Yeah, seriously. No, I like I said earlier. Uh, well, oh, okay. Never, never. You know, without the bathroom paper deal. Yes. No, 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 no. That's not happening. No, no. Yeah. Sorry. No. I understand. <laughs> I understand you. Well, I wrote down a few things. I wrote down that I might be willing, not completely forever, but use way less meat, or maybe go meatless that week. I would definitely do that. Like I might do a $50 grocery week or a $20 five grocery week. So I might really, I might really cut my grocery budget for a month and really get creative. Okay. I'd be willing to do that. I'm willing to do no spends. I really don't spend all that much money. I've shared this on the channel. The only area that I think that I tend to overspend is groceries. Besides that, I don't think I overspend on clothes, entertainment or anything else. I think it's mostly just, and there's Alzi. Do you want to say hi, Alzi? Then you're welcome. I'm online with Jan. We're on our oh, show. Hi, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> anyway, okay. Another thing I'd be willing to do is maybe hang laundry. That's not something I do. I'd be maybe willing to do that. I'm willing to do a lot of different things kind of for a fun challenge, but for maybe something temporary because I do work a lot. So my time really is limited and you either work more, but then you pay for some of those conveniences such as using a dryer. So let's say I did not work at all. We'll just say I didn't even do YouTube. Maybe I would have more time to hang clothes out, bake homemade bread, things like that. Cause it's all about time. You know, it's, you know, money versus time type thing. And you got to figure out what works for you.
So I'm willing to do a lot of things, but maybe just temporary. The no spends though, you've done those, Jan, low spends, no spends. I still, I still believe in them. I think they're great. I think it's something that can be pre-planned. I oftentimes yeah. joke about sprinkling a few in during the month, like some sprinkling Parmesan cheese on the calendar. I really believe that they're important. And I do believe especially in meal planning is very important. It's not restrictive. It's very freeing. Meal planning is very freeing. You have more options when you plan ahead. Having stuff ready is a wonderful, wonderful option. I agree with you. So I think we both came up with things. Now, if it's okay, I'll go to question three, the last question, because we do like to keep our show 30 minutes or lower. Give it, and I thought this was a good question, and I know I'm going to get a lot of excellent comments from the viewers and subscribers. Give examples where you think people take frugality too far, in your opinion. Opinion. And remember, guys, these are just our opinions. Everyone has different ones. So we love to hear all different opinions. So Jan, do you think people take frugality too far in your valuable opinion? Agree. There are no right. There are no wrong answers. These are just feelings and our opinions. Okay. Um, in my opinion, I believe if a person can take frugality too far is in the instance of, um, being deprived of, you know, getting proper medical attention, um, you know, stopping medication without consulting with a doctor. I used to work for a doctor years ago. Mm -hmm. These, these are, these are important matters. Not, you know, not just to, you know, save money here. And I, I know things are expensive, but when it comes to frugality, if it's going to harm anyone in any way, health wise or, you know, mental health or anything like that, always get the proper help that you need. So, you know, there, there could be a point, anything done in excess, in my opinion, is never a good thing. And even if it's a good thing, if you will, if it's done in excess, anything done excessively or extreme cannot necessarily always be a great thing. That makes sense. In other words, life's all about balance. Balance, perfectly said. And I think so. The, the medical, I definitely agree. That was one of the things I wrote down. So, you oh. know, like I, I've heard of people that they have a tooth that's abscessed and they're trying to take care of it themselves because they don't want to spend the money or don't have the money. I mean, there's times where, you know, I mean, and I agree. And I know Steve Young from the Steve Young um, 74 channel said this. And, you know, I haven't heard any other channel say this. And I agree with them. Yes, it is good for us to have an emergency fund. So if you have something like an abscess tooth that you can pay for that, but let's say you don't and you have a charge card. Now I do not recommend going into debt, but I'll be honest with you. There are situations where I would go in debt and let's say I didn't have any money in my savings or I only had a couple hundred dollars and fixing my abscess tooth with everything was going to be about 800 with medication. I would charge it, okay? And then I would just pay it off or get another part-time job till I paid that off or whatever. Um, you know, that would be a situation where I would charge and all that. I'm going to get some, probably some disagreements on that, but I don't think uh, charge cards should be used for an emergency fund, but there's times where emergencies come up where you don't have money and then you could use that as a extreme backup. I don't know. What do you think, Jan? Absolutely. It buys you the necessary time. It gets the job done and it buys one the necessary time to bridge them. But if the person better still has that emergency, uh, emergency fund, they know that right away it can be paid off. But if that happens, then you know what to do. You have to earn your income to make up the difference ASAP. Exactly. Now, did you have any other re ways that you too extreme that you wrote down? Did you jot anything else down? You know what? I need to check this bag of tricks here. <laughs> okay, all goofing, all goofing aside to me, extreme would be yes, to give, give up coffee permanently forever. I can't do that. That is way too extreme for me. Yeah. That <laughs> Unless there was a health reason that you were allergic to something all of a sudden. Oh, absolutely. That's a different issue. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, and there's people that have found out they're allergic to chocolate or they have migraines and they have to give up chocolate or caffeine. And it's probably really tough. And then they go back to using it and then they get a really bad migraine and they're like, okay, this is why I can't be on it. And then they find alternatives it may be tough, but they get used to it after a while. 
Absolutely. You know, so it would be hard. Well, I wrote down some extreme things. Would it be okay if I said, or, you know, I didn't know if you had anything else. No, no, please go ahead. <laughs> okay. And I'll ask you, Jan and viewers, if you would do these things to save money. Okay. I'm going to say the first one though, because I think this is the most important thing. Okay. One example where I think people take it too far is where people, and I can see this sometimes in the frugal community where people judge other people of how they're spending their money. Now I saw a lady wear a shirt and I thought this shirt was so good. It was a picture of a woman that was going, shh. And she had pretty lipstick on and she was like telling people, like, like telling people to please shh. And below it, it said, if you don't pay my bills. In other words, if you don't pay that person's bills, shh. Okay. And I love that. That's probably, I would love to own that shirt. And everybody yeah. has opinions and that's okay. But people sometimes when it comes to extremism, they like to tell everybody else how to spend their money and what to do. Anything where you're judging other people's choices, because if you want to live the extreme frugal lifestyle, nothing wrong with that. I think we can learn a lot from it, which in some of these things we can use. I mean, I actually like some of the extreme frugality, but if someone else doesn't want to live that lifestyle, that's the judgment. So that's the one thing where I think people take it too far. I wrote two other things. And one I saw on a TV show and that, well, actually two of them I did. I'll ask Jan, Jan, would you eat roadkill to save money? If one of Never. your family members or no. your, uh, your next door neighbor, Sally Joe no. came over and said, I found a dead pigeon. Would you like to come over for pigeon stew? No, <laughs> no. And oh, uh, uh, uh. this is why it's good to have a little extra padding on you for moments like that. <laughs> I know. And I'll have to tell you something funny about that in a second. Okay. So no to um, the uh, road, no, no to the road kill. I think that's taking it too far. And let me tell you another thing that I wouldn't do. And I am probably the most outgoing person. I will talk to anybody. I'll talk to inanimate objects, which I've been known to do. I will talk to anyone. I am not shy whatsoever, as you guys know, but if I'm at a restaurant and it bugs me to see people not take their food with them and they might be going places, let's say somebody was having pizza and they left two pieces of pizza and they weren't going to take it home. I'm not going to go up to them and go, hi, excuse me, my name is Buddy Bob. Could I take those two pieces of pizza because I'm trying to save on my food budget? There is no way I would do that. I think that's taking an extreme. Jam, would you do that? Absolutely, positively, no. I know it's kind of crazy. And you were talking about the extra padding. As most of <laughs> you know, it's now been, well, when this film goes up, it'll be 13 weeks by then. It's been 12 weeks since I've had my car wreck. I do, I, my neck is still broken. I'll find out in October if it isn't, if it's still broken, but it is healing. I don't think my collarbone's still broken, my rib or my sternum, but talking about extra padding, that extra padding actually helped with my broken sternum, it actually protected it and it's helped with my ribs. So there's times where extra padding can be positive. There you so, go. Now, Jan, is there anything else now talking about all this stuff today? I'll just add another question to everybody. Is there any extreme thing that anybody wants to go and try anything at all? Actually, I'm thinking, I I'm not actually thinking of anything I want to try right now, but I'm willing to give it some thought. Okay. You? Okay, I did it once, and for me, in my lifetime, once was enough. Okay. And I, I talk yeah. about it on an upcoming video, unless it played already. Roller coaster, roller coaster, once. That was it, done. That's it. You've gone on That's a it. roller coaster? Con Con the one in Coney Island, yes, years ago, once. <laughs> That's an extreme for you? Sure. <laughs> I've been on a roller coaster too. I thought it was fun. I don't know if any of you like rides. It is guys. fun. I did not get sick, but I said never again. Just once was enough, huh? Once was enough. I'm glad I did it, but once was enough. I understand. I totally understand. One thing I'll never do again is go to any outdoor activity in Texas in the summer uh, where I have to be outside and there are no public restrooms and no shade and there's sun beating down on you. I will not do that again. So that's my one thing I won't do. But I want to hear from you guys before signing off. What are some extreme things you've done to save money? And what are some extreme things You've seen other people do, but you're just not willing to go there. 
So before signing off, Jan, do you have any parting comments or anything you'd like to say to anyone? I'm just so glad that we have this opportunity with this wonderful show. We come on once a month. Thank you so much. Again, working with you is beyond an honor and beyond a pleasure. And you guys, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. We love you and have a wonderful night evening. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.